podcast personal finance edition this is rashmi joined by my co-host olivia for a rather interesting episode yeah so today we're discussing some seemingly promising side hustles including drop shipping multi-level marketing schemes and online work we've mentioned before how valuable it is to have multiple streams of income but it's also crucial to think critically about what is a valid job and what's just a simple scam especially with online work popping up seemingly everywhere. So let's start with one big type of online work, drop shipping. I have friends who have discussed this before with huge plans to use it as a get rich quick scheme to finish high school as a millionaire, but would it even work? Well, in order to know that, we need to know what the basics are first. It's a way of fulfilling online orders, but it's not actually selling your own products. You are essentially the mediator, selling another person's goods and taking part of the returns for yourself. And that sounds a little too good to be true, because it almost is. There's a lot more that goes into dropshipping, especially from the management perspective. And it doesn't always pay off, but doing it successfully might work? Yeah, so let's consider some of the pros and cons. On the positive side, dropshipping can have low costs thanks to less storage and logistics since you're not actually holding the products. But it's also a low risk starting out because you're now holding those products. Plus, you can start dropshipping remotely and have flexible routines without worrying too much about product quality and shipping control because you aren't in charge of that. However, since dropshipping is so easy to get into because you're a mediator and there's that prospect of high costs, it can be very competitive and items can quickly go out of stock. But don't get your hopes up too fast. It's likely that you will have low profits starting out and gaining profit in the future will most likely require a good amount of effort. And before we move on, I do want to touch about upon one more thing, legality. Dropshipping is legal in the U.S., but there may be other legal issues depending on how your business is run. Hopefully, this gives you some insight on whether or not dropshipping is worthwhile work to get into. Yeah, me personally, I wouldn't want to get involved in this. The fact that it's making me question legality is a huge red flag. 100%. I'd rather not risk of going to jail from dropshipping. But now, there's also other side hustles that entice people as well, including multi-level marketing, which you might be more familiar with referring to as a scheme. But surprisingly, multi-level marketing, also known as MLM, isn't always a scheme. It can be a valid business strategy to get involved in, but this requires the ability to discern the legitimate side hustle from the actual scams. So MLM is a sort of network marketing where products are sold by people with the purpose of expanding the reach of a product by maximizing the number of distributors. In return, promoters get commissions and as well as compensation for sales their recruits make as well. So if I recruited someone who recruited a third person as well and the third person made a sale, all three of us would get a cut of the returns. That's what makes it multi-level marketing. Pyramid schemes or multi-level marketing schemes use the structure as a facade to make money off of new recruits instead of the sale of an actual physical product. These schemes don't have an actual real product that they're selling, and the only way you can make money is by recruiting people with the promise of large returns in a quick time frame. They also likely rely on dues from members to stay afloat, since they're not actually selling real products. These are also illegal, according to the Federal Trade Commission. Any MLM making less than 70% of sales from non-distributors is considered an illegal pyramid scheme. That means that people from outside the organization have to be buying at least 70% of their products being sold. Generally speaking, it's probably best to stay away from any sort of MLM. There are better ways to make money from side hustles than risking getting entwined in a fraudulent corporation. But if you're really considering it and deem participating necessary in some way, make sure you aren't signing up for anything you don't have full knowledge of. Complete a thorough inquiry into the company before getting too involved. But me personally, I would be staying away from LMM. Same, but there are even easier ways to get involved in schemes unknowingly, and that's online. Fake job scams are becoming extremely common with ads constantly popping up claiming to provide you much needed money. And a lot of these scams include fake job postings, interviews, work from home scams, and similar promises of getting get rich quick schemes. 
if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is, which is the big theme from today's episode. Yep, it's important to be realistic. Now, stay conservative with sharing your personal data during hiring processes and avoid paying fees before employment and also look out for simple mistakes like spelling errors, basic email addresses, and evasive interviewees to stay safe from these types of scams. Some side hustles that might do this are mystery shopping, virtual medical billing jobs, paid online surveys, envelope stuffing, and more. These all involve some sort of upfront payment or free work to start that is never followed up on, leaving you in the dark with less money than you started with. What I like to keep in mind is that if something seems weird in any way, avoid it. That includes the way you get the opportunity, how it's conducted, and what it ends up being once you start, even if you get that far. Exactly. When I get invitations to join companies for online work to get thousands of dollars quickly through messages, I immediately get alarmed since text is not a professional method of gaining employment. So I carry the same logic over to social media. If opportunities rely on odd methods of communication instead of just using a professional email, I assume that they are odd work and avoid them. And also, I'd like to mention that if you're getting emails with strange endings or just common endings like at Gmail, it might not be a valid company since a lot of professional companies have their own email domain. That's true, and I also do the same. And on top of that, always look for little errors like I mentioned earlier. If a professional company can't spell something right or has grammatically incorrect sentences, I start thinking that they're not that professional after all. Yep, there are plenty of ways to earn money from a side hustle that doesn't seem sketchy, so you're not losing out by avoiding sketchy stuff. That's all for today's episode of Community Corner Podcast, Personal Finance Edition. Thanks for tuning in. This is Rashmi Olivia, cashing off.